If you are experiencing showers of blessing, I said praise the Lord. Every drop of rain on you will spell miracle, salvation, deliverance, supernatural power. Don't worry about the rain. It is coming from heaven. And as it's coming, and nothing, and nothing can send it back the same way your miracle is coming. And the power is coming. I congratulate you today that you are here on this special ground. And at this special time, it's going to be wonderful. For me. For your family. For your wife and husband. For your children. Raise up that victorious son. Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you because of showers coming from heaven. We have no complaint. We know that you are the sovereign God. And you do as it pleases you. As the rain comes now. And it's not resisted. So your word will come. Your wonders will come. Your miracle will come. Your salvation will come. Every good thing will come upon your people tonight. In Jesus name. Confirm it in every life. In Jesus name we pray. Give me a good miracle walking. Amen. Before you sit down. God bless you. You can sit down now. Tonight we come. For social. For divine solution. And tonight. We want to look at the word of God. I'm reading actually a story to you. And this story will tell you. How to break down. Every barrier against divine solution. You see, divine solution comes from the Lord. And there is nothing that can stand between you and that divine solution. If you will yield, if you will surrender, if you will look up to the Lord, that solution will come even in your life tonight in Jesus' name. For everyone here without exception. And for all our friends, all our people who are online, anywhere, everywhere, power is coming to you now. And you are in your home, you are listening, you are in the hospital, you are listening, and you are in a church building, you are listening, or you are outside, and you are listening. Solution has come to you today. But I'm asking a question. Why is it that some people do not have the divine solution, divine salvation, and the supernatural they ought to have? There is a barrier for some people. And that barrier is what we are going to clear away tonight in Jesus' name. That's why my topic tonight is breaking down barriers the divine solution. Pulling it down. Throwing it away. So that every hurdle and everything that stands between you and divine solution. Everything will be cleared away tonight in Jesus name. Breaking down barriers to divine solution. The story is the story of a king called Belshazzar. He made a feast. He called concubines, wives, ministers, all the people, big, short, and big names in his kingdom. And they came together and they drank. Not only that they drank, they used the vessels that they collected from the house of God. And then they were making merry. It was all sensuality. It was all for drunkenness. It was all for evil, for iniquity. And that is normally the barrier between us and divine solution. Why? God is holy. Sin 
will build a barrier. Iniquity will be a barrier between you and divine solution. And all evil things, evil acts, evil language, evil disposition, all those bring barriers between us and the divine solution. All of a sudden, a hand came from heaven and began to write on the wall. And when it wrote on the wall, it wrote in a language that Belshazzar did not understand. Even though he didn't understand the language, it terrified him. He began to shake and he forgot about all the wine and all the things he was uh, having before him. And he called his astrologers, he called all the people, he said, please come and interpret in the writing of God. Those astrologers were not children of God. And the, the children of Satan cannot read, cannot interpret, cannot understand the writing of the Almighty God. And so they couldn't read. And that made him more terrified. And then the queen came to him and said, Don't be terrified. There is a man in your kingdom. That man, his name is Daniel. He has the spirit of the Holy God inside him and because he's righteous he can read because he's a child of god he belongs to god he can read the writing of his father and so they called in daniel and the king said i've heard about you can you read the writing that the astrologers cannot read that the chaldeans cannot read can you interpret for me what my people cannot interpret. And Daniel said, yes, I will. But you can keep your gift to yourself. And he read the writing. And he interpreted the writing. The long and short of it is, he was the barrier to his own blessing. And Daniel reminded him of his father, Nebuchadnezzar, that had a big challenge. And then divine solution came from heaven. And he said, if you had done like Nebuchadnezzar, your father, divine solution will have been yours. But now, because you set a barrier between yourself and the almighty God, that's why this is coming. That's the story. Now we're going to look at the details of the story as I bring to you how you, by the grace of God tonight, you'll break down every barrier between you and your divine solution. All that barrier, all the hindrance, all the wall of demarcation, and all the stumbling blocks between you and that divine solution is broken down tonight. And when the barrier is broken down, favor will flow in. Healing will flow in. Power will flow in. And the goodness of God and the goodness of heaven will flow into your life in Jesus' name. I plead with you to pay attention. Not to allow anything to turn you this way or that way. Because today is going to be an unforgettable day in your life. In my life. In my life. Today will be an unforgettable day. Divine solution will come to you in Jesus' name. Three things I'm looking at. Number one. Willful, wanton, and obstinately wallowing in corruption. I'm trying to tell you, summarize for you, the life of Belshazzar. He was willful. That means if he wanted to do evil, he allowed nothing to check him. He allowed nothing to stop him. Willful. He was wanton. Sensual sinful and he didn't limit anything at all like sensuousness and liberty to do evil 
any time to any level that's what characterized his life he was obstinate obstinate even when the life of his father would have been a good warning for him no he was obstinate he wasn't going to allow anything that will stop him from doing what he was going to do and he wallowed in corruption now when daniel came to him daniel said you know the story of your father your father too was proud your father was an idol worshiper and your father experienced the judgment of god but he humbled himself Number one, if you're going to have the divine solution, there must be number one, humility. The Bible says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And when you come to the Lord in that humility, and you're not saying, I am high, I am great, I am all in all, you come with humility. That's what happened to Nebuchadnezzar. And things changed in his life. Number two, honesty. He was honest. He said, now, I'm going to praise the God of heaven. He said, this is what happened to me. He didn't modify. He didn't cover up. He said, even though I was a king, I lost my senses. I lost everything. But now, I've come to the Lord. He was humble. He was honest. And then, holiness came in. You see, when somebody is humble, and he confesses his sin, and he turns away from the sin, and he's honest. He says, nothing in my hand I bring, simply to the cross I clinch. It is that that brings humility, and brings honesty, and brings holiness in his life. And so Nebuchadnezzar, in, being, in turning around, having divine solution coming from heaven, he brought in holiness into his life. And if you are going to have the divine solution, all the barriers to humility you take away, all the barriers to honesty you take away, all the barriers to holiness you take away, anything that is sinful, anything that is transgression, whether in thought, in mind, in action, you take that away. It is that that opens the door for your divine solution. And as I look at that man, he got healed. You know, he had mental problem. That's Nebuchadnezzar. Because of the judgment that came upon him. Because all the barriers were taken away. And all the barriers were broken down. As humility came, it will come to you. And then honesty came, that honesty will come to you. And then holiness came in, all the lives of sinfulness and carelessness and drunkenness and the womanizing and adultery and fornication, everything passed away and it came before the Lord. Then with that holiness, God loves holiness because God is holy. His nature is holy. The heavens are holy. His angels are holy. And when you turn around and you turn away from your sin and you come to the Lord, ways and doors will open for you in Jesus' name. And then he came to himself. Healing came for Nebuchadnezzar. And the healing that came made him to realize I was mad before. And then he came into his kingdom. And all these people were waiting for him. After seven seasons of mental problem, and he came back, you will think that nobody will accept him anymore. Honor came back. You understand? Honor. God will honor you. As we take away all the barriers, the Lord will honor you. And of course, happiness came. How happy he was. That throne he had not seen for how many years now. And he sat on the throne again. And eventually happiness came. Tonight happiness will come to you. And then eventually, now the, the time we're reading the story of Abishasa, he was gone. That is, Nebuchadnezzar is gone to heaven. And if a man like that 
You remember? In chapter 3, he raised up idols. In chapter 3, he threw Shedak, Meshach, and Abednego. He threw them into the fire, but he returned. He humbled himself, and the barriers were broken down. The man got to heaven eventually. There is hope for you. You will get to heaven. I said there is hope for you. You will get to heaven. But, 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 if you act like Belshazzar, after knowing the story of Nebuchadnezzar, if you then set the barriers before you, if you say, I don't care, let the heavens fall, let whatever will happen, happen, and you do like uh, Belshazzar, well, let me tell you, he set a barrier between himself and the Almighty God, as I've described the life of his father, actually his grandfather, Nebuchadnezzar, unto you. Let me tell you about Belshazzar. Number one, haughtiness. That man was haughty. No respect for God. No respect for the vessels out of the house of God. No respect for any moral, normal lifestyle. He was haughty. If you're haughty in your life, you don't hear words, you don't hear message, you don't listen to Bible, you don't listen to preacher, you don't listen to anything, and there's haughtiness in your life, take care. That's the barrier between people and the divine solution. Not only that, that he was haughty, he was hypocritical. You know, hypocrisy, he acted as if, is there any God? Is there any temple? Is there any sanctuary? Is there any commandment of God? Bring the wine and bring all my concubines. And he led an hypocritical life. He knew the story of his father. And he knew the way that divine solution will come. He knew the way that he will have favor with God. He knew the way that his grandfather had taken. But he abandoned that. Number one, haughtiness. Are you haughty? Are you proud? Are you lifted up? Is your mind lifted up? You're setting a barrier between yourself and the divine solution. Are you hypocritical? You know the right, but you do the wrong. You know the direction to go, but you go the opposite direction. And you act as if you never read the Bible. You act as if you never went to church. You act as if you don't know that Jesus Christ brings salvation and brings redemption to us. He was hypocritical. Not only that, he, was, he had hatefulness. He hated the Jews. He hated the people of God. He hated the worship of God. That's why he brought all those things. He said, I don't care about uh, those Jewish people. I don't care about their worship. Hatefulness. Uh, do you have hatefulness in your heart? You hate the truth. You hate the light. You hate everything uh, that the Lord has set up for your salvation. That's the way of Belshazzar. And then he was, he had helplessness. You see, he called the astrologers. They couldn't help. When somebody has set a barrier between himself and the Lord, then there is helplessness at the time of his fear. At the time of his dismay, at the time of his terror, who will he turn to now? He didn't even know Daniel. And Daniel was there. And Daniel was a public figure that everybody knew. That this Daniel knew the mind of God and could read the writing. And then he forgot about him. You know why? Because he just lived a life that made him helpless. I pray you'll not be like that. And then hopelessness, hopelessness. He forgot all the beer, he forgot all the alcohol, he forgot everything was doing. Now he was hopeless. What am I going to do? I can't help myself. Astrologers cannot help me, and the people cannot help me on the until the queen came. And even though the queen came, yet he didn't repent. His father repented. He had hardness of heart hardness of heart what will be will be i'm going to do this the heart hardened are you like that 
that as we're going through the days of this divine solution crusade and other people are repenting, other people are calling upon the Lord, their lives are turning around, their lives are changing, but there you are, hardness of heart. I, I told you that Nebuchadnezzar, because of humility and because he surrendered to the Lord, he got to heaven and the end of Belshazzar hell because the barrier was never broken down. And even when the interpretation came to him that this is the interpretation of the word reaching on the wall, there was no repentance. I will put a chain of gold on your neck, Daniel. I will exalt you. I will make you this. The man was going to die. He was going to go to hell the following minute. And I was still bragging, I will do this, I will do this. Well, the man ended up in hell. I will not go to hell. Somebody there, I will not go to hell. When you surrender yourself unto the Lord, whatever had happened, like it happened to Nebuchadnezzar, and you come all humble, Lord, I cannot say I've not done anything wrong. All the things that came upon me, it's because of my sin. But I believe you have granted me the remedy. And the remedy is in the Redeemer, in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord will pardon your sin. And then salvation will come to you in Jesus' name. I didn't hear divine solution. Amen. I come to point number two now. Point number two. Daniel is as now come. And Daniel has read the writing. You know, it's not enough to read. You can read the Bible. I can read the Bible. There must be somebody that will come as an interpreter of God's mind. Interpreter of God's word. Interpreter of God's revelation. Interpreter of God's ordinance. And so Daniel came and then he read what was written on the wall. He said, many, many, take hell, you for sin. Belshazzar had never heard any word, any sentence like that before. Many, many, what does that mean? And then all those astrologers, they never saw any writing like that before. Many, many, take hell, you for sin. And then Daniel said, I'm not only going to read for you, I am going to interpret. That's what brings us to understanding. Reading alone does not bring understanding. And learning alone, I can see the writing, that does not bring the change that ought to come. It is the interpretation. And when you hear the reading and you hear the interpretation, and then you accept that and you say, that is coming for me, the barrier to divine solution will break down in your life in Jesus' name. That's why we come to point number two now that says, which wanting only worthy through Christ. And when Daniel explained and interpreted, he said, many, many, the Lord has searched out, has known everything you're doing, and he has numbered your kingdom, and it is finished. He still had a few minutes, he could have said, I accept that. I believe that. I don't doubt that. I look at my life and with the life I have lived, what you have said that God, the God of heaven, has looked at my kingdom, he has numbered my years, and it is finished. And in the few years, in the few hours remaining, like the man on the cross, who was ready on the cross, a little step, he would have gone to hell. But then, with the few minutes remaining and the time remaining, he said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he made the proper use of the little time remaining. And the Lord said, I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. I pray you will not miss your chance. You will not miss your salvation. You'll not miss the divine solution in Jesus' name. 
the time that remains. There are people, they come to the crusade like this, and then the time uh, we have to take the decision, and the time remaining that we have to say yes to the Lord, and we say, okay, Lord, I know I'm the sinner. I know I'm the guilty one. I know you are the Savior. I know you are the Redeemer, and I give myself to you now, and that does not take five minutes. But they will not spend that five minutes. They will spend all the time. They will worship, they sing, they hear the word. At the time of divine solution and salvation, then they bolt out. I pray you'll be wise. I'm talking to somebody there. I said, you'll be wise. You'll be wise unto salvation in Jesus' name. And Daniel said, in verse 27, it said in verse 27, Thou tickle, thou art wage in the balances and art found wanting. Thou art wage. It said, Beshazzar, you know what? Let me talk directly to you. Thou, Beshazzar, thou king, thou highly placed man, thou the popular man, Thou, the religious man, that, the idol-worshipping man, you have waged in the balances and you have found wanting. What does that mean? The Lord weighed him. Number one, he was willful. He was willful. Number two, he was wanton. Uh, check up your life. And the Lord is going to weigh you by the commandment of God by the expectations of God and by the word of holiness that he has said, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Weigh yourself on the balances, on the scale of the demanded, expected holiness coming from God. And he says, you're willful. You know that your life is not righteous. Your life is not holy and you are not meeting up with the commandment expectation of the Lord and you are willful. And then one turn. And not only that, he was uh, wicked. Wicked. If you look at the life of the Belshazzar, you see the element of wickedness. He didn't only commit sin, he involved other people to commit sin. He wasn't only in the broad path that leads to perdition, that leads to hell. He called other people, women and men. He said, follow after me. He knew the way he was taken would lead him to perdition and hell. And yet in his wickedness, he called other people to join him. He was thoughtless. There are many people like that. The evil they're doing and the sins they're committing and the transgressions they're following. They're so wicked. They say, I don't want to go to hell alone. I don't want to perish alone. I must call other people and they must join me. I pray the Lord will turn your life around. You will be rather like Nebuchadnezzar who changed, who turned You'll not be like Belshazzar in Jesus' name. He was wayward. He was wayward. He hid his real life, and then waywardness came in. There are people like that. They can't stand straight. They can't talk straight. They can't behave straight. They can't go straight in the path of uprightness. Wayward. They'll be wobbling, uh, you know, one side there, one side there. And that is the barrier. When God sees that somebody is wobbling, is wayward, is not straightforward, you cannot predict him, his life is wayward, he sets a barrier between him and the divine solution. But you know, if you will just come out of the crowd today and the Lord said that you separate yourself from all that waywardness and you come to the Lord today and you say, Lord, here am I. Enough is enough. I want to follow the Lord. The Lord will forgive you. It will change your life. And all the waywardness, everything will vanish away in Jesus' name. That man was worldly. Think about him. Think about him. The life of drinking, the life of adultery, the life of fornication, and the life of heathenism, and the life of paganism, and the life of society. There was nothing right in his life. 
worldly, completely. He went, he went across and he went even overboard. He was totally his mind, his heart, his life, his disposition. Everything he did was totally of the world. There was nothing of heaven and there was nothing of seriousness. There was nothing of salvation. Everything followed after the works of the flesh. And that sets a barrier between him and the Lord. The word of God says, love not the world, none of the things that are in the world. If any man, even Belshazzar, if any man, even you, if any woman, even you, love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all the things that are in the world, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life and the loss of the flesh, they are not of the Father, but they are of the world. And he says, and the world passes away. And the world and the worldly people are passing away to a lost eternity. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. I will abide forever. I said I will abide forever. When you break down, when you break down, all those barriers between you and the divine solution and the divine Savior, I pray you will do it tonight in Jesus' name. He was also weak in character. Weak in character. You know, a man, even though he's a king that cannot stand and that cannot say, this is the way what keep the arena. Even though he was a king, alcohol was his master. Evil imagination, adultery, fornication, the works of the flesh, his master. He could not stand weak. There are people, they are graduates, they know science, they know history, they know engineering, but they are weak in character. All that they have learned cannot give them backbone. They cannot stand. They're just like Belshazzar that was weak in character. But you know, if you come to the Lord today, it will strengthen you. It will strengthen your backbone. Amen. And then you will stand and you stand for righteousness. Anywhere you are, that weakness of character, the Lord will take away in Jesus' name. And the Lord will make you worthy through Christ. Because the man was worthless. 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 He couldn't save himself. He couldn't save any of those concubines. He couldn't save any of those people. His same partners. But because he was weak, he was worthless. And the only way you can be worthy, because you see, everybody is weak like that, in your own strength, without me, without Christ, you can do nothing. But as you come to Christ, a change will take place. Transformation will take place. And then the Lord will make you worthy. Where are you? The Lord will make you worthy. All the worthlessness will be, it will be taken away. The worldliness will be taken away. The waywardness will be taken away. The wickedness will be taken away. The lawlessness in your life will be taken away. And the Lord will cleanse you and wash you. He'll wash you whiter than snow. I said he'll wash you whiter than snow. That's why David prayed. David said, oh Lord, I have sinned. And in sin did my mother conceive me. In sin was I born. He said, wash me with Aesop and I shall be clean and I shall be whiter than snow. Tonight is your night. When you take all those barriers away, when there's no pride, and when you're bent before the cross of Christ, and you say, Lord, I come, the Lord will wash you clean, and all those uh, defilements, everything will be taken away from your life in Jesus' name. That's why the Lord said, I will sprinkle clean water upon them and they shall be clean and from all your filthiness and from all your iniquity i will place
washed you and you will be clean. That washing is coming upon your life right now. That brings me to point number three. This is what uh, this man, uh, Belshazzar, did not do. But this is why we're going to go beyond uh, Belshazzar. I will go beyond Belshazzar. You see, there are people, they remain in the same class over the years. This year now, they're in the class of wickedness. The following year, they're in the class of wickedness. The following year, they're in the class of worldliness. The following year, they're still in the class of waywardness. The following year, they're still in the class of, um, of worldliness and worthlessness. But when you make up your mind and you say, I'm coming out of that class, where are you? I said, you're coming out of that class. And then your life will change. You come and you say, Lord, I am willing. Lord, I'm going to be washed. And Lord, I'm going to be made whole at the cross. That's why the word of God says in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. And he said, come now. He said, don't waste time. You know, uh, Belshazzar, he wasted time. He didn't understand that all those enemies, the middle person, they were just by the wall and they were going to come in and his kingdom had been waged and everything was finished and it was going to perish thank god i will not perish i said thank god i will not perish when you listen to the word and you're willing and it says come now and let us reason together says the lord though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow Tonight, I said tonight, it will wash you and you'll become whiter than snow in Jesus' name. And though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Look at verse 19 there. In verse 19 there it says, if ye be willing and obedient. Willing and obedient. Belshazzar was not willing. He was not willing uh, to go to the side of his father. And Daniel said, you know the story of your father. But he became humble. He became honest. He became holy. And because of that, the Lord had mercy on him. And the Lord gave him forgiveness and freedom. And forgiveness will come to every willing person today in Jesus' name. You come humble. Have you ever been humble in your life? Did you ever say sorry when you did wrong? Did you ever say sorry to God? Did you ever do like David? I'm a king, but Lord, I have sinned against thee. And thee only have I committed this trespass. Do you come before the Lord in humility? If you do that, the Lord will forgive you today. The Lord will turn your life around today, and you are honest, you are honest. You don't say, they made me do that. Nebuchadnezzar did not say, uh, somebody pushed me to raise up the idol, somebody pushed me to uh, throw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the furnace, somebody pushed me to blaspheme the Lord. He said, I am the guilty one. Nobody pushed me. I did all that myself. It is that honesty the Lord is looking for. And then you say, I won't do that again. After the Lord forgave him, and after the Lord changed his life, he didn't dress up any idol anymore until he died. He didn't throw anybody into the fire, into the furnace, until he died. He didn't practice any wickedness anymore until he died. He continued in that humility before the Lord, in that honesty before the Lord, in that holiness before the Lord, and then the Lord honored him. He didn't come down from the throne anymore. The honor was permanent because he came to the Lord in all honesty and yielded himself to the Lord and even wrote it down as a testimony and spread it in all the provinces of his kingdom. 
That's the kind of honesty the Lord is looking for. If you don't have that humility, there's no salvation. If you don't have that honesty, there's no salvation. And if you don't give yourself unto the Lord to cleanse you and to wash you and to purge you and to make you righteous, there is no salvation. Salvation does not come to the people who say, yes, I've sinned, but I'm going to sin more. Yes, I've done evil. I'm going to do evil more. Yes, I raised up idol. I'm going to raise up more idols. No, it doesn't come like that. It's the people that say the barriers of sin and the barriers of idol worship and the barriers of fornication and the barriers of adultery and the barriers of concubine, concubinage. Everything will be broken down and I come to the Lord just as I am and I want him to wash me. I want him to cleanse me. I want him to turn my life around. That's how the salvation will come and it will come to you today. I said it will come to you today. And then because of Christ, he'll make you worthy. Are you hear your amen? Christ is the only worthy one. It's worthy of the Father. It's worthy of heaven. It's worthy of power. It's worthy in every area. And when he says, I stand at your door and I knock and whosoever hears my voice, I will come in unto him. I will dwell with him. And he comes into your heart. He makes you worthy. I said it makes you so worthy. Salvation will come, forgiveness will come, and redemption will come, and then he'll make you worthy of heaven at last. And when the rule is called up yonder, thank God if you are saved, thank God if you have turned around, thank God if you have bent the knee before the Lord, thank God if you allow Christ the Savior and Christ the Lord to make you worthy of heaven. When the rule is called up yonder, you will be there. I will be there. And when the saints go marching in, the saints, not the sinners, the sinners are not going to crawl in, they are not going to march in, and the unrepentant sinners, they are not going to crawl in, they are not going to ever get in, they'll be like a Belshazzar. But when the saints of God, the people who are washed, and the people who are saved, and the people who have given themselves to the Lord, when they go marching in, thank God I will be there. I said, I will be there. That's why the Lord is calling upon you. And he says, if ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Salvation will come to you. Healing will come to you. Deliverance will come to you. The power of God to live a righteous life will come to you. All your past will be forgiven and all your past will be totally changed in Jesus' name. It's about an eyes closed. This is the time to come out of the class of Belshazzar. This is the time for you to humble yourself to say, Lord, I know I know my life. I know what I've done. I know the way I've been going. I know my situation. But Lord, I come. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. And I'm going to call upon the name of the Lord. And my life will change. Everything will turn around. It's bowed and eyes closed. Anywhere you are now, you are hearing the voice. You are hearing the word. And you are hearing the revelation of the Lord. And you don't want to perish like Belshazzar. You want to be saved. You want to be washed. You want to be cleansed. You want your life to be turned around. And you want to become worthy through Christ. Anywhere you are, you raise up your hand, you're telling the Lord, oh Lord, I'm here. Oh Lord, I'm here. Raise up that hand. Don't remain like Belshazzar, wayward and wicked and worldly. Don't remain like that, that you are hardened in sin. But you say, Lord, here am I. I've heard your word. I've heard your word. And I realize I'm the one you are talking to. And I want your salvation. I want your forgiveness. I want your freedom. I want you to set me free now. Wherever you are, raise up your hand. God bless you there. God bless you there. If you are raising up your hand, please stand up and uh, I'm going to pray with you. 
and the Lord himself it will turn your life around. God bless you there. Stand up. God bless you there. God bless you there. You have a short moment now, like the thief on the cross. He made use of that time, and he said, Lord, remember me when you come to your kingdom, and forgiveness, and freedom, and pardon, and salvation came to him. Immediately, as you stand up, you're standing up, and you're telling the Lord, O oh Lord, I will not continue in my sin. I will not continue in the evil I will not continue in my wickedness. I will not continue like Belshazzar. I don't want to perish. I don't want to go to hell like Belshazzar did. Oh Lord, here am I. I want your forgiveness. I want your salvation. I believe that Jesus died for me on the cross of Calvary. Tell him, tell him, tell him there. And the Lord well, pardon you, and then the Lord will make you worthy, worthy of heaven, and worthy of his grace. As you say, yes, Lord, I come to the Lord. It will save you now. And then it will change your life. It will transform your life. Holiness will come to your life. Righteousness will come to your life. You will no more continue in your smoking, in your drinking, in your adultery, in your fornication. Because without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. It will make you holy. It will make you righteous in the private, in the public, anywhere you are. That peace of God and that pardon and that purity will come to your life. Uh, tell the Lord, tell the Lord, and say, Lord, I'm here. I want your grace. I'm here. I want your pardon. I'm here. I want your salvation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You said, whosoever comes to you, you will in no wise cast out. I have come. I am saved. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And grant me the worthiness and the righteousness that a true child of God ought to have. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for all these who are standing here and every other place. I pray that your salvation, I pray that your forgiveness, I pray that your pardon, I pray that your eternal life will come to every one of them in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, with the humility, for the honesty, you have, you help them to have a life that shows the light of the gospel in holiness and righteousness all the days of their lives in Jesus' name. And I pray at the end, like you took that Nebuchadnezzar to heaven eventually and you honored him, I pray that your honor will be upon these people while they are here on earth. And at last, you take them to heaven in Jesus' name. Confirm your salvation in their hearts, in their lives. And from today, let this new life be reflected in every one of their lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name, I pray. Another amen. God bless you. Keep standing. Our counselors are coming to you now, and uh, they'll give you the slip to fill, and you'll be faithful and give them correct information. We're calling our state pastor to take over now. Counselors, let's quickly attend to all our brethren. Let's be very, very fast. Please uh, give them slips to fill. And let's uh, ensure the details are obtained to be able to get in touch with them and be of more spiritual help. All who indicate giving their lives to Christ, we want you to please fill in the slips, collect a slip from our counselors, and fill in the details and hand it over back to the counselors as you finish. Please give in the details. We want to be of more spiritual help to you. We want to contact you after this program to be of more spiritual help to you and to be able to uh, share the word of God with you, the love of God, and uh, pray with you and lead you in the way of the Lord, the way of holiness and righteousness, like you have heard, the way that leads to heaven. And God will bless you more and more in Jesus' name. If you are connected online, please get the online link and fill in the form online and submit. And by the grace of God, we shall get in touch with you. 
those who are connected on radio, you may want to make use of the WhatsApp line, the WhatsApp telephone line, to send in your details. And the number is uh, plus 234-815-8767. WhatsApp number, you can send in your details, your name, your phone number, your contacts by email or WhatsApp by sending such details to the WhatsApp number plus 234 815 819 Zero one seven. I take it again. Plus two three four eight one five eight one nine one zero one seven. This the number, the WhatsApp number that you can use to send in your details online. Click the uh, link that is there, fill in the form, and submit. And for all of us in our various uh, church locations, please collect the slips from the counselors, fill in the details, and hand the form back to the ushers. Let's do that quickly. Very soon, the man of God will be coming apart again with the power of God for divine solution ministration. Divine solution prayers. You will receive your miracle today. All of us that are seated or we are, you are standing wherever you may be, please keep praying. Keep praying. And keep expecting. Very soon, the man of God will be coming up again to pray for every one of us. Don't go yet. Stay where you are. Expect the miracle of God. Expect the blessing of God. Expect divine solution to all the plagues, all the problems, all the challenges that you have ever experienced. Tonight, the Lord will roll them away. Tonight, the Lord will grant you divine solution. Let's keep on praying. Let's keep on praying. If you are connected through Zoom or you are able to see the... Uh, Link that is being displayed, please click the link, fill the online form, and submit. You can submit through WhatsApp, and I give you the WhatsApp number again, plus 1017. You can send in your name, your WhatsApp number, your email, or any other contact through that number that's given. Do that now, and by the grace of God, we shall be in touch with you. will be of more spiritual benefit to you. Counselors, please, let's be very fast. Let's Attend to all who have indicated giving their life to Christ. If you have not been attended to, please indicate. If you raise up your hand, indicating that you give your life to Christ, indicating you are ready to surrender to Christ, please call the attention of the counselors as they pass by. And counselors, please fill, get, check up the slips. Make sure every detail is provided. Then you hand over the slips to the supervisor before you return. And before you return, please look around and check up to see other sectors where there might be the need for her. Prayer time as we are going through the counseling. Keep on praying and keep on expecting the miracle of God will touch you tonight. The man of God is coming up shortly. To pray for everyone, divine solution prayer, divine solution ministration, you will receive. Counselors, let's be fast.
Counselors, let's be fast. If you are connected online, stay connected. Miracle prayer is coming shortly through the man of God. Divine solution prayer, divine solution ministration will touch you where you are. And you will never be the same again. Counselors, let's be fast, let's be fast. Supervisors, let's please indicate as we are done with your sector. Counselors, let's be fast, and as you are true, you can return. On your way, check up and see those who might still need to be attended to. We are done. God bless you. Now, let's all rise up for prayers. It's time for Miracle Solution. Miracle Solution. Yeah, welcome back, sir. Praise the Lord. Everybody I said, praise the Lord. Everybody I said, praise the Lord. The Lord healed and delivered Nebuchadnezzar. He became humble. He faced the Lord and he knew that his problem was caused by not paying attention to the man of God, Daniel. And eventually, that calamity came upon him. But when he humbled himself, and he was honest before the Lord, that humility and that honesty and the holiness, the promise that he made to the Lord, I will not go the bad way, the idolatrous way, and the evil way, the sinful way, and the wicked way anymore, throwing people into fire and, uh, you know, tormenting them. He said, I won't do that again. And then deliverance came unto him. Our God is still the same. As you honestly come to the Lord and humbly come to the Lord, and as you tell the Lord, now you are going to live by his grace according to his will. That healing and that deliverance will come upon your life in Jesus' name. The Lord does not heal somebody to give him strength to go and serve Satan. He wants to be your healer. And when he heals you, he wants that healing. He wants that strength to be used to the glory of God. And as you make up your mind that the healing he gives you and the deliverance he gives you, you are going to use the strength to serve the Lord. Healing, deliverance will come to you today. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be healed, shall be delivered, shall be saved, shall be set free, is coming upon your life right now. Are you ready? God is ready. I said, are you ready? The name of Jesus is available. I said, are you ready? And the healing power of God will flow into your life. Anybody ready there? Raise up that hand and lay, and lay the other hand on yourself. And that power that delivers, that heals, that sets free will come upon your life now. And after the final amen, you'll check up yourself. And whatever the challenge may be, the Lord will have taken everything away. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. Because we know with you all things are possible. 
And when we come before you in all humility, in all honesty, and when we want to use the strength, the deliverance, the healing to the glory of your name, we know that you always heal. And therefore, I pray that your healing, your deliverance, your redemption will come to everyone right now in Jesus' name. I pray from the top of the head to the tip of the toe, you will touch your people. You will transform their lives. Incredible disease, you will take away from them in Jesus' name. Lord, we promise you the healing you give us, the deliverance you give us. We're not going to use any gift of God, any gift of yours for the devil and for evil and for continuing in sin. We're going to use your healing. We're going to use your deliverance to serve you in righteousness and holiness all the days of our lives in Jesus' name. I pray that that insanity and madness will vanish away in Jesus' name. I pray all that swelling, any part of your body, the Lord touch you now and take that infirmity and swelling, take it away from your body in Jesus' name. I pray that the blind eyes there will open and the deaf ears and the dumb tongue will speak out, will hear in Jesus' name that short leg i command the short leg grow out in jesus name i pray lord all those things walking about in the body causing sensation of fire cause sensation of pain all over the body i eradicate and remove that from your body right now in jesus name i pray lord incurable diseases you will heal cancer be healed in jesus name Tuberculosis be healed in Jesus' name. And all those incurable terminal diseases I command now, the hand of the Lord come upon you, be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, those, those who are paralyzed, let them rise up and walk. And those who have any pain in their body, I command that pain will vanish away in Jesus' name. Lord, touch everyone. Heal everyone, deliver everyone, and grant us the grace to make use of the healing, make use of the deliverance in serving the Lord in holiness and righteousness all the days of our lives in Jesus' name. Confirm it, Lord, in every life. In Jesus' name I pray. A final amen. The Lord has touched you. Check up yourself and you see the power of God there. Put your